Ladies and gentlemen, Texas takes another L. And I hate to keep reporting so much bad news out of my state, but I have to. These stories are so important to talk about. The individual that you see on my screen is just the epitome of just a horrible individual. This story is going to have some details that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. My opinion might bother you as well, but that's your disclaimer if you need to exit the video. But a father in Texas was arrested this week after police say that he intentionally abused and starved his young son to death. This beautiful baby that y'all see on my screen. Brandon Lee Cervera, who's 28 years old, this fool right here, was taken into custody on Thursday and charged with one count of injury to a child with the intent to cause serious bodily injury in the August 2021 death of the little boy. Let me see if I can get his face up here on the screen for you guys. Hold on. Give me a moment. I hate that they got so many pictures together. Give me a moment. Right here. That is four-year-old Benjamin Severa. Benjamin Severa, four years old. Beautiful baby boy. According to a probable cause affidavit obtained by the San Antonio ABC affiliate KSAT TV, and this is coming from lawandcrime.com, so thank you for the article. Brandon Severa, on August 17th of 2021, brought an unconscious Benjamin Severa, again, he was four years old, to an emergency room at the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. A nurse repeatedly called 911 and told police that a young boy had just been brought to the ER in a condition that was likely indicative of abuse. Benjamin was reportedly covered in bruises in various states of healing and appeared to be extremely emaciated. So he was starved. That always bothers me when people starve children, man. That's just, just a horrible thing. He was also wearing a disposable diaper, which authorities noted was unusual for a child less than two months away from turning five years old. The medical staff attempted to resuscitate the child, but their efforts were unsuccessful and Benjamin was pronounced dead just minutes after arriving at the facility. Homicide detectives with the, with the uh, San Antonio Police Department responded to the scene, which similarly noted that Benjamin appeared to be severely undernourished and sustained bruising, indicating physical abuse. Homicide investigators interviewed Cervera, who allegedly claimed that all of his son's injuries were self-inflicted. So they tried to, he tried to blame this on the boy himself, man. They always blame it on the kid. He, he allegedly further stated that a family member staying at his apartment had a cell phone video proving that Benjamin had been injuring himself. The Bexar County Medical Examiner's Office performed an autopsy. However, in an initial report determined that Benjamin's injuries were not self-inflicted they were the result of physical abuse and were not the cause of his death, KABB reported. The medical examiner later concluded that Benjamin was starved to death. Detectives executed a search warrant on Severa's apartment where they reportedly uncovered alarming evidence of the abuse Benjamin suffered at the hands of his dad. Inside the apartment, the kitchen cabinets Pantry door and refrigerator had all reportedly been fitted with locks meant to keep Benjamin from getting to the food inside. There was also a lock on the outside of the door to Benjamin's bedroom that was apparently used to keep the child locked inside of his own bedroom. The boy's bedroom reportedly only contained a single mattress that was heavily stained with urine. According to KABB, a cell phone seized from a relative who was staying at the apartment contained numerous harrowing videos and pictures further inventing abuse. One video reported showed that starving Benjamin, or, or excuse me, one video reported 
One video reported showed a starving Benjamin hitting himself in the head with his hands and asking for bread. That makes me want to physically harm this man. When you starve children, that is a slow, slow, lonely, painful death. That really puts a lot of hate in your heart. That makes me hate this man. I don't know this man, but I know enough about this story so far that really just puts a deep hate in your heart. That's hard to listen to. Benjamin appeared in a recent photograph with his eyes severely bruised and swollen, the report stated. Per the KABB report, the videos of, on the family member's phone only got more disturbing. Check this out. A second video reportedly showed Severa and a relative refusing to give Benjamin food while the little boy was shaking uncontrollably, crying and begging for bread and water. In another video, Benjamin was forced to eat breadcrumbs off the bathroom floor without the use of his hands. Oh my Jesus. Mm. Other videos reportedly depicted Benjamin being forced to drink hand sanitizer. begging for water while crying and waving his hand in front of his mouth saying that it was burning because the baby boy had hand sanitizer in his mouth. Severa is currently being held in the Bexar County Jail. A magistrate judge set his bond at $500,000 according to online records. He is currently scheduled to appear before a judge for a preliminary hearing on March the 29th um, here in about 29 days. Records show that Lee is also scheduled to begin a jury trial next month stemming from 2018 uh, charges of threats and harassment. The family member whose cell phone was seized has not been charged in Benjamin's death. But should they be charged? I don't know because you witnessed this. You recorded it and didn't say anything. You saw something and didn't say something. Should they be charged? I think so. This is insanity. I think everybody who lived there that was an adult should be charged. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Tell me what y'all think. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And if you guys are listening to this broadcast right now, if I need you guys to make sure and click that thumbs up and share this video, we want to have at least one thumb up for everybody who is currently watching right now. So make sure and share the story if you would, please, because I think it's very, very important. But I want you guys to remember a starvation death is a slow, agonizing death. That means it could have been prevented. Somebody could have said something earlier. Where was the biological mother? We don't know. So many questions, so many issues with this story. So if you watch this child be slowly murdered, I think you should be charged too for recording it and didn't say anything. Everybody involved, thank you. Everybody involved should be in jail facing charges. Everybody. Police say a local four-year-old boy died from abuse and starvation. Brandon Lee Cervera, uh, Cervera uh, has been charged in connection with his son's death, according to an arrest affidavit. The little boy, Benjamin, was brought into the hospital in August by his stepmother. He was unconscious, and investigators say he appeared to be severely malnourished. The report says there were videos on the stepmother's phone showing the boy shaking, crying, and begging 
for bread and water. Cervera is charged with injury to a child. Police also have made an arrest in a disturbing case of child abuse, one which they say involved the starvation of a four-year-old boy. This arrest coming six months after the child, who they say had numerous bruises on his body when he died. As Katrina Weber reports, the man facing charges is the boy's father. A mugshot shows 28-year-old Brandon Cervera in custody after his arrest yesterday afternoon. But he's facing charges stemming from something that happened last year, the death of his four-year-old son, Benjamin. An arrest affidavit offers the disturbing detail, saying the child was rushed to a hospital in August, unresponsive and with bruises on his body. Staff there called San Antonio police who began investigating his death, and at first it appeared they had no easy answers. The affidavit says a cell phone that police got from a family member provided some of the biggest clues in this case. It says the pictures and video on it painted a timeline of abuse starting in April of last year and leading up to the time of Benjamin's death. That court document says there are videos showing Benjamin begging for food and water and one where he is made to drink hand sanitizer. It says when police searched the family's home, they found the refrigerator and cabinets locked, as well as a lock on the room where Benjamin slept, apparently on a urine stained mattress on the floor. According to the affidavit, the medical examiner determined the child died of starvation. Although it appears police may have a second suspect in mind, Brandon Cervera is the only one they've arrested so far. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police have made an arrest in a disturbing case of child abuse, a man accused of starving and beating his four-year-old son. The arrest came yesterday and six months after the death of the child. Katrina Weber is live downtown with the details. And Katrina, do we know why it took so long for police to make the arrest? Well, based on what it says in the arrest affidavit, it seems that there was some question about what caused the boy's death. It says it wasn't until police found cell phone video that they had some of their answers. It ultimately ended with the arrest of 28-year-old Brandon Cervera. The arrest affidavit says his four-year-old son, Benjamin, was unresponsive when he was brought to a hospital back in August. Medical staff then called police after discovering bruises on the child's body. The affidavit says Cervera initially told police that his son had caused his own injuries. However, police say during their investigation, they examined a relative's cell phone, which showed the four-year-old being abused. The affidavit says the video showed the child begging for food and water and being forced to drink hand sanitizer. Police say they also searched the family's home and discovered the refrigerator and cabinets were kept locked and that Benjamin slept in a locked room on a urine-stained mattress on the floor. Now, the medical examiner determined that that boy died of starvation, and they say that it was one day before what would have been his fifth birthday. Now, the affidavit refers to a second person who also may be considered a suspect. However, there is no indication that that person has been arrested yet. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. It is a recent troubling trend. Child abuse cases that turn deadly. Two of those cases happened just weeks ago. And tonight we're learning about another case where police say a toddler was starved to death back in August. Both his mother and stepmother are facing charges. And we're learning more details about a six, a six month long investigation that ended with police arresting them. Patty Santos has the story. Court records say there's video of the four year old forced to drink hand sanitizer, then crying and waving his hands, saying his mouth was burning. Police say another video showed he was forced to eat breadcrumbs off the bathroom floor. Benjamin Cervera died in August. The medical examiner says he was starved to death. Tonight, his father, Brandon Cervera, turned himself into authorities. Stepmother, Miranda Casares, was arrested by Jordanton police, both charged with injury to a child. This follows the death of two other children this month at the alleged hands of their caretakers. I say to the community, report to law enforcement if you have serious concerns about a child. Child abuse investigator Carrie Wilcoxon is highly critical of the state system and says the community needs to put more pressure on child protective services and a failing system. What we need to do is we really need to improve the skills around triaging cases that don't need to be in the system so that a state investigator has the time 
and the resources to go and spend and focus on cases like this. She's urging state and local lawmakers to put more funding towards child abuse prevention and education. We are number one actually in the nation for increasing rates around child deaths. And tonight, Child Protective Services tells us they had been involved with this family before Benjamin's death. They tell us the toddler's other siblings are under the state's watch right now. Steve, Stephania. I think just as bad as what he did to this little boy. Let's see if I can get us. Forced him to drink sanitizer and eat breadcrumbs off the floor. Locked him in a room. And should there be more charges? Yes, there absolutely should be more charges. A hell of a lot more charges. As many charges as they can get against everybody who saw something and didn't say anything. The person who recorded it and didn't say anything. I mean, yes, it's good that we got evidence. But how is it that you allow this starvation? Because starvation can happen, but it happens over time. It could take days. It could take weeks. It could take months. But that person had plenty of time to report this. Why didn't they? At this point, I don't even think it even matters. I just think the fact that you didn't say anything, I think you should be in jail, maybe even for about a quarter of the amount of time that he gets. So if he gets 100 years in prison, they should give you at least 25 years in prison for seeing something and not saying anything. But that man is just worse than... That picture, I mean, he looks like a devil, just an evil, evil person. But this baby boy needed an advocate and he had nobody there for him. But again, what he went through, he did not deserve it. And that baby boy deserved to have an opportunity to grow up and become something great. So four-year-old Benjamin Severa, Young Prince, R.I.P. But I hope you guys will leave your thoughts. Let me know if y'all think I'm being a little bit too harsh about my stance on the other parties that are involved. But how much time do y'all think he should get in prison? Do y'all think he should face the ultimate penalty under law? Because I think he should. Nothing is worse than what he did to this little boy. Humiliation, embarrassment, destruction, suffering, just everything horrible, horrible.